There is an entity out there that is so powerful it will take the X-Men and the Guardians of the Galaxy to stop it. Welcome to the Complete Story Series, we take trade paperbacks and single issues and we break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then we bring it back to you. All observations of the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems and all art is owned by its respective companies. This is the story of Black Vortex, which brings the all-new X-Men, the Guardians of the Galaxy, and the original X-Men together in an adventure that bridges what is happening to them all right now in all-new, all-different Marvel. This is part one. Twelve billion years ago, an alien known as Gara was concerned that her people had reached the limit of their potential. That this was it. They could go no further in her time. But that's when the alien structure her people had worshipped granted her something. A mirror which would allow an individual to see their full, true potential. The question is, was it a gift or was it a curse? We now go to current day with Storm telling Beast he's wrong and he knows it. He broke the laws of space and time by bringing the original five X-Men to the present from the past. And while Beast admits that it may have been wrong, he can't see the damage that he's done without seeing all of space and time. And since he'll never get to see all of space and time, he'll never know if he actually did anything wrong. But that's when Magic shows up with the young X-Men in tow. Kitty needs all of us, so let's go. She grabs both Beast and Storm, and they warp out of there. Meanwhile, in space, the Guardians are having game night, and Rocket Raccoon is cheating as the Game Master, until Peter Quill calls up the team to tell them that he needs help. He snuck onto Mr. Knife's starship with Kitty Prime, and they discovered that Mr. Knife had gotten his hands on the Black Vortex, a gateway to infinite power. Not only that, but he was teaming up with Thane, Thanos' son. Mr. Knife, who by the way is Jason of Spartox, Star-Lord's father, was having some of his lackeys touch the mirror and they were granted amazing powers becoming his Slaughter Lords. But it's just as Thane was about to submit to its powers that Peter explains that he and Kitty jumped through the floor and they took the mirror with them. And now Star-Lord and Kitty Pryor are having everyone come to planet Spartox to so the orphanage where Star-Lord helps out so that they can figure out what to do next. The X-Men, the Guardians, and various random helpers all converge to try and figure out what they should do with it. What should they do with the Black Vortex? But it ends with them deciding who will try it first. Gamora volunteers, but Storm tries to tell her no, and Bobby wants to use it to get him to grant him powers of Tony Stark. You know, money powers, or Thor's chin power. Even Captain Marvel argues that maybe they should use it, but Storm defiantly tells everyone, we need to destroy the Black Vortex. We can't mess with this power. That's when a booming voice behind all of them tells them, the Black Vortex is not theirs to destroy. The Slaughter Lords have arrived. Everyone jumps in ready to fight with Captain Marvel blocking the first of their attacks. And then Gamora leaps in to move towards the mirror. In the confusion of the fight, Storm asks Star-Lord where the mirror went and Star-Lord's ship Lydia tells them that Gamora had it, but no one can pick her up now. That's because she's been granted cosmic powers by the Vortex. Using her new powers, she manages to dodge every attack and injure all of the Slaughter Lords, making her the champion of the fight. Seeing their chance, Storm tells the X-Men to get the heck out of there, and Jean asks if they should take the Black Vortex with them. Bobby enthusiastically says, HELL YES! Drax, on the other hand, thinks that perhaps they should smash it and aid their fellow warrior in battle. Star-Lord quickly corrects him. I think she has it, Drax. And that's because Gamora is literally dropping all of the Slaughter Lords. So Magique does her thing and she teleports everyone to the moon of Spartox along with the Black Vortex. And it ends as the Slaughter Lords have no idea where they all went. The debate finally begins again. What should they do? Storm wants to destroy the Black Vortex, but look at the power that Gamora has. Obviously, it works and it's worth it. Star-Lord takes point. All right, let's all line up and power the hell up. And that's when Kitty Pride eyeballs him. What? You want to use this? Well, yeah. We power up, stop them from powering up, and keep the Black Vortex from them. You actually want to use this on each other. I somehow got the feeling you don't think we should. Oh man, you're so gonna break up with me over this. Everyone begins to reconsider, and Captain Marvel asks, Is everything in the galaxy bad? And Drax just votes that they just let him destroy everything because he doesn't even need the Vortex. Star-Lord tries to convince Kitty that they need to do this. She doesn't understand the things in space that they deal with. And Gamora agrees with this power, she can finally end Thanos' life. But none of that matters as everyone hears a whoosh and the area fills with a blue light. Oh my stars, declares Beast as he steps out of the vortex. A new person. He could see everything now. Space, time, the connections in between them all. And he thinks 
Now he knows how he can fix everything. He can fix what he broke. The first thing he does is begin his calculations, and Kitty looks at him disappointed. You shouldn't have done this, Henry. Laura runs over. I've had enough of this thing! And B shouts, no! And the vortex hits her, knocking her back. But at that moment, Nova finally catches up. Hey guys, I made it! And then he looks around at everyone looking worried, scared, and angry. What did I miss? Gamora grabs the vortex and sighs with Beast as they show everyone their full potential. And Beast calls out to his friend, Storm, I wish you would submit. You could see the future without fear. It is within our grasp. Not everyone turns away though. Seeing his potential, Angel steps forward and he submits to the vortex. He then walks over with Beast and Gamora and he tells them he is free. Seeing how cool Angel got, Bobby steps up. Hell yeah, I submit. But Drax gets in the way. No. Back away from the Vortex, Oscar the Grouch. I have not begun to unleash the Grouch. Kitty confronts Beast. Remember it was your job to watch these kids, Hank? None of that matters, Kitty. But then, Beast realizes the Vortex is missing. That's because Storm has grabbed it and she's making a break for it. Gamora jumps in, throwing her down, and the two begin to battle it out over the Vortex. But then Gamora stops, because she sees Thanos! Beast tells her to ignore it, that it's just Jean messing with her mind, so she furiously jumps at Jean for daring to enter her mind. Kitty grabs Gamora's cape and Drax carries Jean away, then knocks Gamora out. Control yourself, he tells her. Beast grabs the Vortex though and he tells Gamora to stop. They have the Vortex and they are not responsible for those who refuse enlightenment. They are the heralds of the new dawn. Beast, Gamora, and Angel all power up and take off into space. And Star-Lord, Kitty, Captain Marvel, Nova, and the rest of the X-Men all try to think of a way to stop them. But they can't. They're too fast in this state. But that's the least of their worries as Mr. Nice Ship arrives overhead. Bobby asks if that thing is on their side and sadly, Star-Lord tells him that it isn't. Mr. Nice Ship begins to charge up and it opens fire on the moon! Meanwhile, Beast, Gamora, and Angel have all gone to another planet, a primitive one, where they are revered as gods for being so powerful to the primitive individuals there. Beast declares, it's time to change the universe, starting with this world. When suddenly, Gamora is struck from behind by a laser beam. She hits the ground hard and drops the black vortex, but as she reaches out for it, someone steps on her hand, and she looks up to see Ronan of the Kree. He smashes her into the ground and takes the black vortex. He then brings it back to his ship, and they leave the area. But Gamora knows where he is going. She knows the Kree, and she knows where they can find the Black Vortex. Back on the moon of Spartox, everyone survived the blast thanks to Magique's powers. Realizing that Mr. Knife will be back for another round, Star-Lord yells for Magique to get them the hell out of there! So she uses the new powers that she's gained from studying with Doctor Strange, and she turns everyone invisible with the powers of Cinerock, since she can't teleport them off the moon. Then, they all load up into Star-Lord's ship and they take off into space, flipping the Slaughter Lords the bird. Once they get into space, they run into even more of their friends, Cyclops and his father who are traveling through space. The hero side of this story has just gained a few new allies. While they're making their way through the galaxy, Gamora is leading the charge on the Kree homeworld, as all three of our overpowered heroes are destroying it, looking for the Black Vortex. They are literally destroying the city and the planet. They have no regard for life any longer. Civilians and heroes alike are burning with their wrath, and the people of Hala, the Kree homeworld, send off a distress signal. When it's received by Star-Lord, Kitty, and the rest of their team, they are also trying to figure out their plan, and at that moment they also see a mysterious alien attacking Spartox itself, and they get a distress call from the orphanage. Mr. Knife and his group are on the moon looking for Star-Lord and all of his friends, Spartox is under attack, and Gamora has declared war on Hala. Their only answer is to split into three groups. So Kitty Pride, Cyclops' father, Venom, and a few others go to Spartox to defend the orphanage. Star-Lord, Captain Marvel, Racker Raccoon, Storm, Nova, Drax, and a few others all go to Hala to save the Kree. And Cyclops goes with Bobby and Groot to distract the Slaughter Lords and Mr. Knife. The Black Vortex has started a number of problems, and even with all of our heroes, will they be enough to stop this? This ends part one of Black Vortex. Now, sadly, this story is massive, so there's no way that I could do this in one video and get it out in a single week. So we've broken it up, and you could join us next week for part two of Black Vortex, with the universe coming to an end.